our side bearings have progressed quite a bit. There's your uh, 2.890, which is your small bore. This used to be, in the 70s, the big bore, 3.06. Then people, including myself, went to the three and a quarter bore. This one, which was three and a quarter used to be huge. Now this is 3.812, a lot larger. And we are developing a four inch bore. But anyhow, let's get the uh, side bearings locked tight in place and then we can start the actual assembly. Clean your journals with some acetone. Inside of the bearing race. And I always like to make sure we get it nice and clean so that there's no problems. I hate it when bearings spin. Get everything centered up. So again, you don't cock the bearing. One drop of red Loctite, smear it on the journal. And another on the inside of the bearing. Make sure you use a tool that's small enough to where you don't contact the cage of the bearing itself. Or it's still got to be large enough so it doesn't get stuck on the journal of the spool. Wipe any excess off. And they're on. Okay, the next step, we're going to get the nice little third member case here. I always recommend marking the caps and the spanners so that they go back on the same side. I'm always picky, so I always use one mark for the ring gear side and two dots for the other side. Of course, you really don't need to mark both sides, but I always do anyhow. This is a third member case we have made for us. It's a 60-61 T6 material. The caps and spanners are made out of 70-75 T6. And of course, being a diehard American, I always have American-made materials. This is not even imported materials. And of course, it's made in the United States of America. Beautiful piece. So we're going to take the caps off. It's also got 9 16th studs versus the standard, which would be half inch. These get torqued to 140 versus 100. So we've got the caps off. We're going to get this uh, load bolt out of the way, and then we're going to install the rear pinion support bearing. What we do here is I use one that is actually 8 12 in width versus the standard one, and I'd have to measure that to remind you what it is, but it doesn't matter. It's a little longer, a little beefier. And you notice these caps are not, not a little wimpy stuff. This will make your units live. We use uh, four little screws here to hold the rear pinion support bearing plate. You can see that there. Instead of a little um, lock type, I don't even know what they would call it, a star washer type deal on the uh, factory units. Clean the bore of the case and the OD of the bearing. And you're going to want one drop of red. Smear that around the inside diameter. And one more drop and we will put it on the outside. A little step plate. And then all I do is I just tap it in with an old axle stub. Okay, so you tap that baby down. That was a little tight. Of course, it's frozen here at this time of the year. But uh, just tap it down until it's flush with the top. Okay. Put your plate in there. And then once again, one drop of blue Loctite. Small drop, small screw. Okay, so you get these little puppies run down. Again, there's just a small drop of uh, blue Loctite on each one. 
Snug them all up. I don't really torque these, I just tighten them down. Okay, so now what we've done here is we've gotten these studs here. ARP is kind enough to make these for us. Uh, we've wire willed these. We're going to fill the holes of the case with acetone and let it soak for a moment. We get any oil residue out there. I've already done that the like, first time, but you don't need to watch all that happy stuff. Clean your studs nice and clean. Now we've got all the oil residue left out of there. Okay, so now we're going to mount our little holding fixture here so it doesn't tear the case up while we're doing the assembly. Just double nut the stud so you can get them tightened in. Get off a of blue in the case hole and a nice little bead on the stud. And tighten it down. Okay, studs are in. Leave up your bearings. It's a little cold here right now. A little lube in here for your spanner. Keep it moved over to the left till you get the pinion in. Caps we have made are have the shuffle pins go all the way through, so there will not be a, a flat washer on the nut. Uh, going all the way through the cap makes these things just hold this cap in place, will not move anywhere. Okay, so we've got a little bit of oil on the uh, studs. Get the nuts on there. Just back them off a oh, maybe a sixth of a turn, something like that, just a little bit so that the spanner can move back and forth easily. Get some oil in the rear pinion support bearing, and I just use Lucas 85140 for the assembly. We use 10. Uh, three eighths inch studs and I usually just put three of them in there, three or four in there while you're doing your assembly so that you don't have to try and struggle trying to slide your front retainer on ten studs at a time. Final assembly will take these back out, lock tight them in place, all ten of them, then we'll put it back together with the o-ring on the final. But for now, that'll get us started. A uh, way to cheat to help you find which way these go on is you have a couple spots here that well even that doesn't work there we go you have a couple spots that are for pins we can put in there also to help twist it okay so now we're going to pop the front bearing retainer in there all right if you try and do this with all 10 studs it just makes it a pain in the butt to get this retainer in and out. Final assembly is enough. If, you're, if you've got three studs holding this in place while you're doing your pattern, that's absolutely fine. Factory only uses five anyhow, so you've almost got that. And then I just tighten these down to 30 for the trial assembly. On the final assembly, you go to 45. Oh, ready? Oh, okay, I was just checking. Okay, here we go. Hear the buzzer. Bzz, that was the buzzer. <laughs>